Good morning. It is now my honor to present to you our graduating students from our accelerated program at the University of Rochester School of Nursing. Please be seated. Good morning to all of you and to all of your family and friends who are joining us um, live stream today. My name is Kathy Rideout and I am the Dean of what I truly believe is the greatest school of nursing in the world. I know that's not the first time you've heard me say that. 
Today is gonna to be a little bit different than what we had planned in the past, um, but after a lot of great work and time committed, um, we wanted to ensure that you had a pinning ceremony where you could all be in person, um, even though your family and friends and the rest of our faculty and staff couldn't be here, but they can see you um, um, through live stream today. So I do wanna thank all of our faculty and staff for helping to plan all of this, specifically to Lucy Carroll, who has um, really given a lot of her time and effort to ensure that you could, um, you could all be here today in person. I want to introduce to you, um, not to you students, but to your families and friends that um, are viewing this right now, um, those that are up on the platform with me. Um, to my left is Dr. Patrick Hopkins, who is co-director of the Accelerated Program. And then to my immediate right is Dr. Lydia Rotundo, who is the Associate Dean for Education and Student Affairs and the director of our DNP program. And to her right is Dr. Lisa Brophy, who is the other co-director of the Accelerated Program. For every pinning ceremony, I have told a story about a situation involving a patient or a family member that has taught me a lesson that I've carried with me throughout my career. Today, I would also like to share you a with you a story, but it's not about a patient or a family member. It's about what you, as students, our graduates, our faculty, and our staff have reminded me during this pandemic. During this year, the nurse and midwife, designated by the World Health Organization, there truly has been a renewed attention to nursing as a profession. Nurses are our heroes. That is what we have heard over and over again this year. I'm certainly glad that we are being recognized as such. But as I've said before, nurses have always been our heroes. Since COVID-19 struck, there have been many difficult and challenging situations and decisions that needed to be made, and we've all experienced a range of emotions. But there have been many moments that have brought rays of hope during this time as well. The pandemic may have challenged us, but our response has truly shown the character of our students, our graduates, our staff, and our faculty. I now want to share with you some examples of these responses. Our students. In March, after decisions were made to pause our academic programs, and the clinical agency paused all clinical experiences. I received several emails from students, including several of you, asking me, at times begging me, please let us go back to clinical. One student in particular wrote to me, this is what we signed up for. Please let us back on the front line. This situation reminded me about the passion our students have for serving their willingness to take risk to help others. Our graduates. One of our recent APNN graduate, graduates working in an ICU called me one evening with anxiety in her voice, telling me that she was just deployed to the COVID ICU unit where she would truly be on the front line caring for COVID positive patients. She was scared, she was fearful, she called me to ask for advice, and we talked about her fears. She wanted to provide the best care possible and was worried that she didn't know all she needed to know. After reassuring her that it was okay to be feel afraid, to feel vulnerable, we talked about her resources and the education that I knew would be provided to her, particularly related to her safety. We talked about the very sick ICU patients that she had been caring for for the past year and how her confidence had grown exponentially with every encounter. She needed assurance and a plan for how to proceed with this new assignment. At the end of this conversation, she said, I got this. She reminded me of the importance of sharing your fears and concern and the courage to face them. We spoke a few weeks later and she told me all that she was learning and all that she was able to teach others. She had actually organized a small support group for nurses to share and debrief their experiences. Another one of our graduates who was working in an ICU in New York City when it all began, 
had communicated with me about all that he and his colleagues were experiencing and the horrific working conditions given the lack of PPE and the sheer number of patients infected, most of them from underrepresented groups. He described it as a war zone. He described caring for three patients in the same single ICU room, utilizing one ventilator for all three patients. He talked about putting several pieces of IV tubing together to make the tubing several yards long so that all the IV machines from each of the rooms could be then brought into the hallway so they could give the medications without having to redon PPE for every encounter. He talked about how he led a group of nurses in a citywide, a New York citywide forum, advocating for more safety measures for the nurses and other frontline workers. He advocated for more support and caring for the increased number of patients. He reminded me of the importance of leadership in the times of crisis and the importance of advocacy. Our staff. One of our school nursing staff members learned about a student who was too afraid to leave her apartment to buy food and that she was going hungry. This staff member, a single mom, went to her own freezer and took out some of her own food and delivered it to our student's house. She reminded me about what kindness and selflessness truly looks like. Our environmental service staff have moved furniture all over Helenwood Hall several times, have cleaned areas multiple times. When we became a child care center in March, he helped to arrange our space to provide free child care for our frontline workers when the schools closed. And they worked long hours to ensure that it was a clean, safe place for the children to learn and play. And now with our students back, a clean, safe place for our students to learn as well. They reminded me about strong work ethic and the importance of working together as a team for one purpose. Our faculty. Our faculty have worked tirelessly to ensure that your education continued, not as planned, but as necessary. They became a force to be reckoned with, meeting several times a day and into the night, planning alternative educational experiences. They worked with our clinical um, agencies to alter schedules, alter times, alter clinical units, making sure that our students were provided the best education possible. They also volunteered their time in the community doing COVID testing, working at food banks, and much more. They reminded me that the commitment to excellence has no bounds. And in the midst of this pandemic, we were also faced with continued racial injustices against black and brown people and renewed attention to healthcare disparities and inequities within our country. On June 5th, our students, many of you, and some of our graduates, along with our staff and our faculty, join with our colleagues from the Medical Center to stand in solidarity for white coats for black lives. And we knelt in silence together for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And on July 11th, we stood in the pouring rain with the Rochester Black Nurses Association to support nurses for black lives. Each of these experiences reminded me of the power of our voices and the ongoing need to demand change and to take action because black lives matter. All of these lessons and examples demonstrate passion for serving, courage to share your fears and move forward in spite of them, integrity and the commitment to the underserved, leadership in times of crisis, advocacy to our patients, families, and colleagues, altruism or selflessness, strong work ethic, commitment to excellence, and social and, racist, ra social and racial justice. It's not a surprise that these are all the core values of nursing, and they have been demonstrated over and over again. I couldn't be more proud of all of you. I have received several comments about how difficult it must be to be a dean during this crisis. My comment back is always, 
it's not difficult when you have the best students, the best graduates, the best staff, and the best faculty. That is why I'll forever declare that we are and will always be the greatest school of nursing in the world. Thank you. At this time, I would now like to introduce your class speaker. Prince Diaby was born in the Ivory Coast, raised in Ghana, and came to the United States in 1995. He has had a multitude of jobs and experiences in the succeeding years, including serving as a dance instructor at Garth Fagan Dance and the School of Arts, and receiving his bachelor's in psychology from St. John Fisher College. In 2019, however, he found his true calling, and we're so glad he did. He arrived here at the University of Rochester and began his nursing school orientation. Today, I'm pleased in welcoming him and to here and to our profession of nursing. Prince, will you join me upstairs? Thank you, Dean Rideout. To the distinguished guests, colleagues, family and friends attending virtually, welcome and thank you. Though I am indeed incredibly nervous, I am somehow compelled to say thank you and to say how deeply honored I am to be granted the opportunity to deliver this commencement address for the cohort of August 2020. To all the intelligent and beautiful women of my cohort who have taught me so much and the charming, proud, soon-to-be mercies that make up this cohort, I'd like to say to you all, we did it. When I received an email from our distinguished executive assistant, Lucy Carroll, about being selected by my peers to represent the class, I was literally on the phone crying to a classmate about ATI remediation. True story. I screamed, what? As I opened the email, Maddie asked me, what happened? And I nervously said, nothing. A few moments later, Lucy called. I was stalling to take her call because I was nervous, such that I was dripping sweat at 200 drops per minute. Later on that day, I received an email from the co-director, Father Patrick, as Gloria would call him. And it said, dude, way to go. <laughs> How exciting. I'm so happy for you. Well done. Who knew that when you started here, you would be given a graduation speech? You have come a long way. I remember you missing a bit of the program because of immigration meetings and also worrying about not being good enough. Everything about what Father Patrick said in his email was true. It wasn't just true to me, but true to all of us in different situations and experiences. We have all come a long way. We have all done a great job. And we have all thought at some point that we weren't good enough. At times, it was content-related struggles, critical thinking on exams, handling a real-life patient, or vSIM, or iHuman. In that same moment, it started to dawn on me that the reason why Father Patrick's statement was true to all of us was because we were all a product of a decision we made at a crucial point in our lives. Yes, that's it. We simply decided, and that decision crossed our paths. A few seconds of transparency. 
close your eyes and take a deep breath as if you're inhaling from an incentive spirometer and let it out slowly. Now, think of all the circumstances you faced, leaving you feeling as though there was no possible way out. All the obstacles, sickness, diseases, struggles, the no's, all the you can't do this, all the you're too old, it's too late, you're not smart enough, and my all-time favorite, why be a nurse when you can be the doctor? As you exhale and reflect, I'd like to share my experiences. I've been in the United States for over 25 years, yet unable to legally work. I was unable to qualify for financial aid in college, healthcare, or have credit. Struggling financially and unable to return back home to my family in Africa, I was very depressed. But how many of us know how to hide it well with a professional smile? Hi, that's me. I was once told by one institution that nursing would never work out. Many people in my life counted me out of the race, but God. Anxiety and imposter syndrome caused me to hang out with the wrong crowds, engaging in non-productive activities and sabotaging my own future, and the list goes on. But then one day, the opportunity granted me the ability to decide. Let me hear you say, I decided. I was about to say. Take for an example, the archer. There are several steps to take to effectively hit your target. The stance, draw back, aim, and release. We've all heard the famous words that those who stand for nothing fall for anything. When an archer takes a stance, it is a position of decision. By taking a stance, we decided to not let the odds define us and or be a product of our environment and circumstances. Next is the drawback. Now the drawback doesn't feel so good. In fact, you're instructed to take a deep breath as you're drawing back the arrow because oxygen and accessory muscles are required to do the job efficiently. We've learned that the use of accessory muscles can be a sign of respiratory distress. This program has required accessory muscles and more. In fact, the distress has been real. How many times did you fail a test or came close to it or received a grade that was just not fair or thought, yep, this is it, y'all. This is the semester I say au revoir. How many times did you think that you must have been doing something wrong because Hannah Clark and Nicole Fleming finished their test in 15 minutes and somehow <laughs> you were still on question 11 trying to practice some deep breathing exercises? <laughs> on a more serious note, how many times did you think that a whole pandemic will take the lives of so many? And yet here we are trying to be at the very line of defense and face it with intelligence and inner strength as we fulfill our mission to care and protect. Or that is 2020 and somehow there are still people who are misinformed that black lives have always mattered. The only thing you can absolutely control is how you respond to the distress. In the words of Nipsey, the game is going to test you, but never fold. Stay 10 toes down. It's not what's on you, it's what's in you. And greater is he that is in you than that of the world. Can I get an amen? The next step is to aim. Yes, that's right. Aim under distress because you are destined for this. And this is what you have trained yourself to do. Rest assured that the University of Rochester School of Nursing believes in us and so go ahead and confidently aim. The next step says to release. 
One thing I've learned this year is to walk in my confidence and power. There is not a doubt in my mind that the administrators of this program, alongside Dean Rideout and our instructors, have done a superb job. They've done an outstanding job in building that smooth, confident manner of release towards our target. If you disagree, well, that's okay. But evidence-based practice says that the seat that you're sitting in right now and me standing up here is enough proof. Finally, the next and final step is the most important one. It requires you to follow through by focusing on the picture or target you saw immediately prior. Follow through and evaluate by keeping your eyes on a prize. For me, that target was a picture of today. Standing tall in honor and gratitude by representing the class. <laughs> Talk about faith, huh? In fact, I started writing this speech in my head on days when I'd fail an exam. As I drove home, listening to motivational speeches and singing gospel music at the top of my lungs as tears filled my eyes. It did not change my focus. There were days when I would confidently volunteer in class to answer a question and I would not get it right. Or days when my classmates would see the look of worry because I did not understand the content. Those days showed me that I had friends who cared. There were times when the picture of today became blurry because the whole pandemic brought uncertainty. Then there was disturbing social injustice that attempted to make me feel like my melanated life did not matter. My response to the misinformed is that I am a living proof that my life mattered then, it matters now, and it will always matter. My friends, be persistent, focus, and follow through regardless of adversity. Remember that a diamond as we are was once a chunk of coal that did really well under pressure. I want you to take away from this message that everything in life starts with a mental decision, which we have confidently made. A made up mind is a powerful mind, a mind that has taken a stand and heavily equipped with the armor of God. Now keep in mind that everything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong. And when it does, remember that we on this day are a living proof. Take a deep breath and aim at every single target, every goal, and every desire. Do it while you're afraid. Do it while you're feeling the emotions that you're just not good enough. Just do it, like Nike says. Do it because you took the archer's stance that yields positive results. Do it because your life, your kids, your family, the nation, the world depends on it. And when you aim, give it everything you've got. Finally, release and follow through, keeping your eyes on a prize. God did not bring us this far to leave us. We will prepare, we will study hard, and we will pass our NCLEX as our destiny foretells. We will become nurses and nurses, and we will achieve our dreams, all because we made a decision. I want to extend a huge thank you to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be all the glory, honor, dominion, and power forever and ever. Thank you to our leader and role model that represents the University of Rochester School of Nursing, Dean Rideout. The wonderful Lisa Brophy, who has taught us so much about leadership within ourselves and the workforce. Father Patrick, who has been a true example of a leader with emotional intelligence. To Darrell, for running a clean race and not forgetting to look back, reach and pass the baton. To my family for challenging me to set the bar higher than the sky for the younger generations to follow. To the Mu Sigma chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, thank you for teaching me Invictus and the test of a man. To my youth dance team Evolution X that are watching my every move I am awaiting your educational success stories. And to my girlfriend who was watching, thank you for being a daily reassurance that I deserve to be in the space that I'm in. 
to the best of the best faculty and clinical staff that we've been blessed with. Thank you for doing your best and know that you got us here. Last but not least to my cohort and now my colleagues, we stuck together and made it together as a unit. Thank you. So we started the APNN program back in the early 2000s. We only had a May graduating cohort. So you all got to go to graduation. And then we realized demand was great for a good program, greatest school of nursing in the world. So we added another cohort. And they started in January. Well, there's no commencement, uh, no graduation ceremony in December. And so we started having pinning ceremonies and I'll speak a little bit more about that um, in a few moments. You don't get a full graduation, but you do. For any of you that would like to come back for graduation, should we have a normal graduation in May, you are welcome to come back. Uh, you will be recognized. You'll go across the stage. You'll shake hands with dignitaries from the greater university get another yellow rose and go sit back down again. Um, so any of you that would like to do that, you're welcome to do that. Family and friends get to come. We have a little reception afterwards. Schools of nursing around the world have had pinning ceremonies for many, many years. And um, each school designs its own pin. Uh, you know, not prepared as ever. I was looking for my school pin today and I'm thinking it's in a box in the attic. I'm not going there. You guys will get a pin. Uh, be careful of the pin. They're expensive, so treasure it. We're going to be asking students to come up. You're going to be coming up in about blocks of maybe four to six. Um, I will call your name, and uh, you get to proceed across the stage. You'll get a sash from uh, Lisa Brophy. There's a red X on the stage. Stand on the X face back out because your family would probably like to see you as you put the sash over yourself. You'll proceed over to do, uh, Lydia, who will hand you a diploma and a gift from the Advancement Center. And then as you go across to the other side of the stage, there's a black mark right in front of the banner. Stop there, face back out, because we've got a photographer. Yes, and when you get in front of the banner, you get to take your mask off, okay? And then put it back on, then put it back on. yeah. <laughs> Rebecca Allen, come loudy. Across you go. Becky would like to thank her parents, siblings, and friends for their never-ending support, understanding, and love in the last few years, but especially in the past year. She would like to thank her boyfriend for his love and patience through all the good times and the hard times and for always pushing her to do her best. And most of all, she would like to thank God for which all this has been possible. <clears throat> Kevin Bagu, magna cum laude. Kevin would like to thank his friends and family. He would not have been able to make it through this year without all of your unwavering and unconditional support. Megan Lynn Bailey, magna cum laude.
Andrew M. Bishop, cum laude. Henry Richard Bodkin. <clears throat> Henry would like to thank the URMC nursing community and the wonderful patients for whom he cares for, making nursing so gratifying. Congratulations to September 2020 cohort for this meaningful milestone. Thomas William Bonfiglio. David Mark Boshan. <laughs> David would like to thank his wife, Amy, for making our little transplanted family flourish. Paige Summer Brennan. <laughs> Paige would like to thank her family for opening their home for her during the duration of the program and offering their support and encouragement. She would also like to thank her friends and boyfriend for their understanding and support. Paige would also like to thank the support of faculty. Jamie Bushinsky. <laughs> Jamie would like to thank his family for their unconditional support throughout the entirety of this program. He'd also like to thank everyone he met over this past year for making it a great experience. He would like to thank the professors and instructors for their inspiring commitment to nursing. Last but not least, Jamie would like to thank his great friends in Buffalo, New York. Go Bills! <laughs> Caitlin Ray Carhart, magna cum laude. Caitlin would like to thank her fiance, Mitch, for all his encouragement throughout the year. She would like to thank her parents, Mary Pat and Bob, along with her sisters, Maggie, Annie, and Patty, for all their support. She would also like to thank Elaine and Ray for being the best roommates. She could not have succeeded without the support from her family, friends, and faculty at the School of Nursing. Aaron Center. Erin would like to thank all of her friends and family for supporting her in her journey to becoming a nurse. She would also like to give a huge thanks to the University of Rochester School of Nursing faculty. Michael Carl Cipriani, magna cum laude. <laughs> Michael Carl Cipriani, magna cum laude. 
Michael would like to thank his mother, brother, and stepfather for their endless support they have given him, even throughout the happy and tough times they have experienced. Mike would also like to thank all of his friends for supporting and being there for him. Mike would lastly like to congratulate everyone in the cohort for graduating and wishes everyone the best of luck, hoping that everyone stays happy and safe with whatever they do in the future. Hannah Clark, summa cum laude. <laughs> Hannah would like to thank her family and her husband for all of their encouragement, support, and love, especially over these last 12 months. She is also very excited to be able to start working on the blood and marrow transplant unit in October. Mia Wu Yu Collins, cum laude. <laughs> Mia would like to thank her mother and sisters for their love and support. She would also like to thank the School of Nursing faculty and August cohort for their constant encouragement. Alexandra Elizabeth Cummins, magna cum laude. <laughs> Alex would like to thank her family and friends for their continued support and encouragement and for always pushing her to be the best version of herself. She would also like to thank her professors who helped guide her to where she is today. Lastly, she is excited to begin her career on the neurosurgery unit at Strong and she would also like to congratulate her fellow classmates. Catherine Sadiq Daoud. <laughs> Catherine Daoud would like to thank her family and friends for their encouragement and unwavering support, not only throughout her time in this program, but throughout her life. Without them, she wouldn't be where she is today. And for that, she is grateful. Madeline Alyssa D. Cum laude. <laughs> Maddie would like to thank her friends, family, and faculty. She would not be where she is today without the constant support and guidance that they've provided throughout the duration of this program. Cassandra Rose Delees. Magna cum laude. Cassie would like to thank her fiance, Sean, and her parents for their encouragement and unwavering support throughout this past year. She is so excited to start this next chapter as a nurse in the neonatal intensive care unit. Prince Diaby. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. Prince plans to spread this lifetime nursing knowledge he's learned from his professors to one patient at a time. A huge thank you to his family and the School of Nursing Friends for showing him loyalty and that teamwork will always make the dream work. Additionally, Prince is grateful for God's divine favor over his life. It's 2020 and Prince sees his vision clear. <laughs> Lauren DeFolvio, cum laude. Hannah Marie Doro, magna cum laude. 
I would like to thank my family, all the friends I have made, and all my professors for helping me get through this crazy year. Holly Janae Dunn, summa cum laude. Holly still can't believe she'll be staying in Rochester for additional winters. As we know, that was her main fear of this program. She's thankful for her family and friends who continue to support her in every decision and all that Mama and Papa Dunn do in order to make her dreams happen like driving her across country in a jam-packed car and waking up to very early morning phone calls because she forgets time zones exist. She is. Nicole Aaron Fleming, magna cum laude. Nicole would like to thank her family and friends for supporting her this year. Thank you to all her classmates for the teamwork during clinicals and group assignments. Thank you to all the interpreters who worked with her throughout the program. Finally, thank you to the professors for their adaptability, knowledge, and passion for nursing. Elena Jane Fredericks, come loudly. Lena would like to thank her father for endlessly supporting her throughout this journey and for being her inspiration to help others in need. She would like to thank her best friends for the endless laughter and the memories that filled their home. She would like to thank her aunts and uncles for always tolerating her frantic phone calls. And lastly, she wants to thank her partner for providing words of encouragement when she needed it the most. Leslie Brooke Galea, summa cum laude. <laughs> Leslie would like to thank her husband and children for their unwavering support and encouragement this past year. Gabriella Ann Gant. <laughs> Gabriella would like to thank her parents and siblings for their unwavering support and unconditional love, even from 3,000 miles away. Madison Jamarek. Cum laude. <laughs> Madison would like to thank her entire family, especially her parents, for their encouragement and tireless support over the past 12 months. She would also like to thank all of the friends she has made along the way that have helped push her through this rigorous program. Lastly, thank you to the supportive faculty that has given Madison the foundation to make a difference in the lives of others. Meredith Stacy Golden. <laughs> this past year has been an absolute roller coaster, especially with COVID making half of the year online. I could not have completed this program without the great love and support from all of my friends and family. Thank you, Mom, Dad, Victoria, and Evan for all of your love and support especially for putting up with my late night phone calls just so I could see the dogs when I was stressed. I cannot wait to start my job at Strong in October. Fixing He. <laughs> Fixing would like to thank her parents for their support and understanding. They are always being there for her. She would also like to thank her housemate, classmate, Azra, for encouragement and kindness throughout this year. Stephanie Lynn House, magna cum laude.
Stephanie would like to thank her parents and sister for their support throughout this past year. She would also like to thank her boyfriend for making the long trips down to Rochester and giving her constant support and understanding her ever-changing schedule. She would also like to thank her friends for being there every step of the way, as well as her clinical groups for all the help and laughter they have provided. Kristen Jacob. Kristen would like to thank her family and friends for the endless support and encouragement they have provided throughout the year. She would also like to thank the faculty for the confidence and knowledge that they have provided throughout this challenging program. Gona Karimi Kurdistani. I would like to thank you, my wonderful husband, Siravan, for being my rock through the tough 12 months of school. Thank you is a small world word for all that you have done for me and our lovely Delana. You were always there for her, always when I was away for school. I will never find enough words to explain how much I appreciate you. I'd like to say thank you to my father who is not here physically, but his spirit will be beside me forever. Also, I'm so blessed to have an amazing mom who always being there for me with her love and support. Jasprit Kaur. <laughs> Jasprit would like to thank her family for all of their support and blessings. She would like to thank her friends for always being there with encouragement, understanding, and excitement. Lastly, she would like to thank her peers in the program for all their help and the great memories throughout the program. Jean Young Kim. I would like to take this time to first and most importantly thank my Lord Jesus Christ for guiding me and showing me unconditional love in his path. Also, I want to thank my wife, Hannah C. Kim, for the love and support she has given me. My parents, Hei C. Kim and Kyung Suk Kim, for molding me into the person I am today. Reverend Caleb Lee for always praying for me and listening to my concerns. My cell group at All Nations Church for the prayers and support. And to my daughter, Joy Kim, I always do my best to be the best dad for you. Ariel Chantel King. <laughs> Ariel would like to thank Mays for being her shield, for his unwavering love, support, and sacrifices made to get her through this journey. She would also like to thank her mom for endless flexibility and support. A special thanks to Dee Dee, Patrick, and Dr. Conyers for their empathy, kindness, and belief in her through one of the most difficult times in her life. She did it. Alexis Clintworth. <laughs> Alexis would like to thank her mom and dad for their amazing encouragement and guidance through this long journey. She would also like to thank her siblings and aunt for providing unwavering support and love. Gertrude Koba. First and foremost, I would like to thank God, my parents, family, and friends for their continuous love and support. Without them, none of this would be possible. I would like to also thank the faculty here at the U of R for providing me with this opportunity. I greatly appreciate it. To my fellow cohort, let's go out there and make the world a better place. In the words of Nipsey Hussle, the marathon continues. Next stop, MP.
Alexandra Kraus, summa cum laude. Lexa would like to thank her parents for their endless love, support, and encouragement. She would also like to thank her friends and family, both near and far, for all of the phone calls, letters, visits, laughs, and words of love. Ralph Leandri. <clears throat> Ralph would like to thank his parents, Angelique and Francois, and sister Angie for their love and support over the last 12 months. He'd also like to thank Corey, Maddie, Holly, Mackenzie, and Kevin for their cramming sessions. Ralph would like to give a special thanks to all his clinical instructors for their patience, time, and support. Finally, he would like to thank his day one, his boy, the homie, Jamie Bajinski. <laughs> we did it. Lisa Marie Fabella Malagit. Liza would like to thank her professors and mentors for their guidance and words of wisdom. She would also like to thank her friends for getting her through the hardships with tears, laughs, and unforgettable memories. Lastly, Liza would like to thank her family and loved ones for all their unwavering support and encouragement to never give up. Cheers to the class of 2020. Veronica Lena Muragi. Frank. Christian Marino Moore, cum laude. <laughs> Frank would like to thank his mother, father, and grandparents for their support. He wishes the best of luck to the APNN 2020 cohort with their futures in healthcare. Andrew John Mason, cum laude. Rebecca Ann Matthews, summa cum laude. <laughs> Rebecca would like to thank her boyfriend, parents, brother, and friends for their endless love and encouragement. She would also like to thank her nursing instructors as well as her work supervisors for their support and flexibility. She could not have achieved her high level of success while balancing a rigorous academic schedule rotating part-time job, family obligations, and her sanity without all of these wonderful people standing behind her. Mackenzie A. Mitchell, cum laude. <laughs> Mackenzie would like to thank her friends and family for their support throughout the program. Natalia Alexis Ortega, cum laude. <laughs> Natalia would like to thank her family for all of their support and contributions, including being guinea pigs for nursing assessments. 
She also wants to thank them for demonstrating understanding with her crazy schedule and sometimes lack of presence. Additionally, she thanks her entire cohort for helping study, stay up late to finish assignments they all waited last minute to finish, and joining in on the laughs and bonding that helped them get through the stress and difficulties of the program. Christelle Paul, come loudly. Christelle would like to thank God for guiding her through this journey. She's grateful to her family, especially her grandmother, whose sacrifices and prayers have led her to this moment. To Obi, thank you for your unwavering support, keeping me motivated and being my biggest fan. To my friends, my extended family, thank you for being a constant source of encouragement and inspiration. Christelle would also like to extend her deepest appreciation to the faculty and the staff at the University of Rochester School of Nursing. Corey Everett Perno. Sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, but I guess you know now. Michelle Pinkasova. <laughs> Michelle would like to thank her family and friends for their endlessly caring and giving support throughout this journey. She's grateful to be able to follow her dreams and wouldn't have been able to succeed without all of their love and encouragement. Molly Poynian, cum laude. Yeah! Molly would like to thank all of her friends and family for their limitless support and patience, her CPEP family for their endless encouragement, and Mike for all his love, belief, and incredibly well-timed humor to help keep her sane. Gabrielle Rose Prince, cum laude. <laughs> Gabrielle would like to thank all of her family and friends who supported her throughout this past year. She is so thankful for all of her amazing nursing friends she met along the way and all of the faculty who supported them as well. She cannot wait to start her career in the acute care unit for the elderly at Highland Hospital. Jessica Marie Raphael. Sana Raza, Magna Cum Laude. Sana would like to thank her mom, sister, fiance, and close family and friends for supporting her through this journey. Honorable mentions to her Nespresso coffee maker and instant part for getting her through the school year. Ayana Robinson, cum laude. Ayana would like to thank her family and friends for their constant support and encouragement during this journey. Edith Rosales, cum laude. Edith would like to thank her parents for their immense unconditional love, encouragement, and sacrifices 
She would like to thank her brother, Jorge, for never letting her forget her worth throughout this journey. She would like to thank Jonathan's parents for their support and kindness. She would especially like to thank Jonathan for being a constant ray of positive energy and love, who has gone to great lengths to watch her succeed. Thank you for being you. Robert Francis Ryan. <laughs> to whom it may concern. It's not easy being Bubba, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> to everyone else, thank you if you helped. You should know who you are. Lauren Mackenzie Schaefer, magna cum laude. I would like to thank my family and friends for their endless support to make my dream possible. Varuna Seabag. I would like to thank my family, especially my husband, Jason, for his understanding and support. I would like to thank him for encouraging me for all his love and sacrifice. Being away from home was not easy, but thank you for supporting my decision to pursue my nursing degree in Rock. I would not be standing up here today if it was not for your support, and I can't wait to start this new journey with you. Shayla Ann Simonich, cum laude. Yes, yes. I would like to thank my entire family and my boyfriend for their continuous love and support. I would also like to thank all my amazing friends I have met here. I couldn't have done it without you all. Carrington Michelle Stuber, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Carrie would like to thank her family and friends for their understanding and unwavering support during this last year. She would like to thank her parents for their encouragement, kindness, and continued support, as well as her aunt and sister for traveling across the country to celebrate this special occasion. She would also like to thank the friends she has met during this year in the APNM program for all their support. Xavira Thomas, cum laude. <laughs> Xavira would like to thank God first, who helped her get through it all. She would like to acknowledge her grandmother, sister, aunt, cousins, and friends for their support all the way from DC. She would also like to thank her boyfriend for being her biggest fan. He would have been the one pinning her today. Big thanks to Uncle Wayne for moving her into Rochester. Shout out to Christelle and Prince for all of the study sessions and late nights at the library. Love you all. Chindma Uzoago. I would like to thank God for this journey, thank myself for believing in me, my clinical instructors for their devotion and encouragement. Finally, would want to thank my family and friends for their endless love. Megan Justine Van Houten, cum laude. Megan Van Houten would like to thank her parents and brothers for their unwavering support, patience, and encouragement throughout this academic year. Adrienne Basile, cum laude.
Krista Nicole Voglar. Krista would like to, to thank her family for their continuous support. She would not be here without them. Shannon Dural Warrity. <laughs> I would like to thank my parents, family, and friends for their constant support throughout this journey. A special thank you to my mom for always being my biggest cheerleader. I could not have made it this far without you. Abby Nicole Weifels, come laude. Well, we made it work. <laughs> so generally, we have you stand up and turn around and, and you know, applaud your family and friends um, to thank them for getting you here. But I also I do want you to all stand up so we can applaud you and you can applaud each other for this tremendous accomplishment. And you can wave behind. There are still cameras on. Right, you can be seated. So although we weren't able to give you the hugs and the handshakes and, and our love up here, you do know how much we care about all of you. We're so proud of all of you and we're so excited that you are now our nursing colleagues, which makes us happier than anything um, than anything else. Um, I will share with you that um, the photo that was taken here, we will um, send that to you. Um, I don't know when, but we will be doing that, I promise you. Um, since the class picture um, was canceled due to weather um, this past week, we are going to take um, a drone photo um, as planned, but it'll be outside um, in one of the courtyards. We'll still keep our physical distance, of course, and wear our mask, um, but I'll have you follow Patrick and Lisa um, back out again. Um, I do just want again just say my congratulations. I want to thank your family and friends who have been watching us. If they were unable to watch it live, um, you have the link for the actual recording um, that we will send back out again to you just in case you've uh, misplaced that. Um, I also want to dearly thank our faculty and staff um, for all of the work they have done throughout this entire year, for our staff that is actually here today helping. Um, and thank you to all of you for your flexibility, for your patience, and your desire to enter the best profession in the world. Congratulations. Thank you.